River navigation sailboat sizes will introduce you to sailing, serve as a review, or help you move up to a larger boat. Captain and mate Farmer have years of sailing and boating training and experience to share with you in these free videos. We're currently refurbishing and upgrading a 29-foot Catalina sailboat for extended cruising. In this video, you will see many types and sizes of sailboats and ways to get started or improve your skills and enjoyment of sailing. Our motto has always been educated boating is more enjoyable boating. Some people learn to sail with these unusual sail configurations, but we strongly encourage you to start on a standard sloop rig with a main and jib. This will make it easier to move up when you're ready. If you're new to sailing, this video will serve as an introduction and you probably need to look at it several times. If you know how to sail on a smaller boat, this video will serve as a review and help you to move up to a larger boat. If you're considering buying a larger boat, first stop now and look carefully at what this video has to say. We want to help you make the right decisions and learn to be a better sailor. It is much, much easier to learn to sail on a smaller boat that reacts faster to changes in sail trim or tiller position. If you intend to move up to a catamaran, Learn on a Hobie or Prindle multi-hull so you can learn how multi-hulls handle. Monohulls will typically sail closer to windward and cats will reach faster but usually not go to windward quite as well and tacking may be more difficult. Note how quickly the speed falls off between 50 and 45 degrees on this cat on the right. Learning on a larger boat, you may not realize you have something less than optimal until the other boats sail off and leave you. With a smaller boat, it's easier to see how changes affect speed. For your first sail, take an experienced coach with you if at all possible. This will get you started right and also much faster. After you're comfortable with sailing race, if at all possible. This will hone your skills faster than anything else you can do. When sailing, there's a lot of new terminology to learn. Get a good basic sailing book like Steve Colgate's Learn to Sail or take a class at your local yacht club. There's even more terminology on a larger boat, and we didn't even point out the radar dome at the stern. You must learn the difference in port and starboard tack and windward and leeward boats for sailing and especially for racing. The starboard boat has the right of way if boats are on opposite tacks. This is one reason most racers start on starboard tack if possible. The windward boat has clear air and is thus more maneuverable and must stand clear. 
the lured boat is sailing in dirty air and will slow down with no changes on her part. These are all the points of sail. Most boats move faster between close reach and broad reach, and especially for catamarans. This may look technical at first, but essentially you want smooth, attached airflow from top to bottom over an airfoil-shaped sail for maximum speed. Healing over may look fast, but excessive healing actually slows your boat and makes it want to round up into the wind. You should control healing to somewhere between a maximum of 10 to 15 degrees, depending on the boat you're on. Telltales help you adjust your sails so you have maximum force from top to bottom of the sails. A draft stripe can help you visualize a maximum camber location forward or aft on your sail. Sail telltales need to be light and not stick to the sail when wet. In the past, people sometimes use old wrinkled cassette tape, and you can actually use wool yarn if you like. Telltale placements shown here are more or less standard, but you will see a lot of variation from one boat to the next. The four and a half placement of the jib sheet car will let you get all the telltales from top to bottom streaming evenly in different wind speeds. Make sure you mark the locations for future reference. When you feel it's time to move up to a larger boat, your biggest decision is how you plan to use that boat. Think carefully about what you want the boat to do for you. Our next boat was a Catalina 25 that we could trailer and two of us could step the mast in the tabernacle mount. Some people like my wife get seasick on alcohol stove fumes, so we replaced the stove early on. Here are some suggested monohull sailboat sizes for different uses. Multi-hull sizes are somewhat similar, but their hull's beam is much narrower. On our Catalina 25, we had a standard rig with a swing keel that we could swing up when we ran aground. We had a tandem axle trailer and two of us could step the mast with a mast up and block and tackle. Jeanette and I went through the cut at Panama City, Florida, out into the Gulf in eight-foot seas and 30-knot winds. Everything was okay until I waked her up. She was sleeping in the cockpit. And then we went outside, turned, and came back into the bay. Boats will often handle more than the crew. Both must be comfortable except in an emergency. Here's our Catalina 25 Starfinder getting ready for a sail. This is the interior of another Catalina 25 and shows the seats and the V-berth forward. This is a 25 looking aft into the after berth and you can see the crank where we crank the 
keel up when needed. This was my first hull repainting, and after that I used Tyvek suits and a lot of hot showers. The Easy Loader trailer was a disaster. Here's our current Catalina 28 Mark II Toucan undergoing refurbishing at our dock at Concord Yacht Club in Knoxville, Tennessee. This is the layout drawing of our 29-foot toucan that I made to help with storage location numbering. This is Toucan looking forward into the V-berth with 25-gallon potable water tank under it and 18-gallon potable water tank to starboard and 19-gallon black water tank to port under the seats. This is Sailing Vessel Toucan looking aft with a sink, LP gas stove, storage, and master cabin access to port, an electrical panel and ice box to starboard. This is the port side of our 25 horsepower Westerbeek diesel engine with the cover and steps opened. The two lines with brass fittings go to the six gallon hot water heater in the lazarette compartment. All hoses are new except for the breather hose. Please be very careful if you have gas. After use, turn the gas solenoid off and let the eye burn all the gas out and then turn the tank valve off. Use the tank gauge to carefully check for leaks often. The ice bin has a storage rack for roll marine charts on the front and the electrical panel is located above the chart table. Toucan's head has a commode, lavatory with shower head and hot and cold water. The electric 120 volt shore power an engine heated hot water heater is in the port lazarette and the water system accumulator tank is forward near the electric pump. Pressurize the LP gas system by turning the tank valve and solenoid on. Then turn the tank only off and watch the gauge for leaks. Smaller boats can use winchers, but self-tailing winchers are better above 25 feet, and electric winches help on boats much over 30 feet. The electrical panel, monitor, and a Raspberry Pi computer running Open Plotter and Signal K are in the cabin. Depth autopilot, compass, and a secondary VHF are in the cockpit. Here's the layout of a larger Catalina 355. Larger boats tend to have more storage space available. There are a lot of 35-foot liverboards out there. Over 35 feet, mast heights get high and mainsails large and more difficult to handle. Switching to a catch configuration gives you much more sail options and for different wind speeds. A Whitby 42 catch is well built for extended offshore cruising and living aboard. I did some of my celestial navigation training on a Whitby 42. 
Catamarans are a more stable platform for living aboard. You have the redundancy of two engines, but they obviously require a wide berth at the dock. Since this 45 has a beam of 24 feet versus 13 feet for a Whitby 42. The Leopard 45 charter version has four cabins and the owner's version, the whole starboard hull, is one cabin. Caution! Sailboats are advertised by the number of berths they have, but storage space is often limited. Our Catalina 25 was advertised as having berths for six, but four board with their gear, mostly bikinis, for two weeks was crowded. There are older, less popular rigs available, like the schooner shown here. Going downwind, you can go wing and wing with two jibs, and in heavy air, you can use the smaller second jib only when needed. There are certainly larger sailboats out there, but I don't think most of us have families that are that large. Thanks for watching this free video, and don't forget to subscribe and like. Links to all of our videos can be found at sailingtucan.org on our river navigation page.